What's up, everybody? It's your boy Melv here in our review. And today I'll be talking about my thoughts. Well, I was planning to do this review yesterday, but with the One Piece trailer came out, I was like, eh, I'm going to see this for today. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the Flash film that came out a week ago. And there's some things I want to talk about. But before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts! So, yeah. I went, I went to see the movie only once, and... Wow. Uh, the, it was praise. Okay, from, from the description, I'll give you what the people think. The film received praise for its plot, action sequence, humor, and performance... Mainly Miller and Michael Keane, but criticized for quality of visual effects and and the third act. <sighs> yeah. Let's okay. I'm gonna start one thing. I want to see the movie to see Michael Keane returning as Batman because okay, come on. How long has it been? Have you seen Michael Keaton put on the famous bat suit? Says 1992's Batman Returns. Hmm? Yeah, thanks, Warner Brothers. You fucked up their last two movies because you wanted child family friendly. Hmm? No, boy. But after watching the movie, I started like, watching it a little bit, going the plot. I think because, okay, warning, spoilers alert, those who haven't seen the movie, don't watch this video. Those who don't even care, well, okay, you're on your own. So yeah, we're in Barry, well, 2023 Barry, trying to attempt time travel. You know, his little speedball thing. I think when he speed, uses X, his speed force to travel back in time. Unfortunately, Bruce, the, um... With the Ben Affleck Bruce from the, you know, the Justice League one, the current Bruce Wayne, Ben Affleck one, warns him about this because even do the tiniest thing can actually change the future. Which, of course, Fl Barry ignored that and time traveled. How far? Well, he time traveled to the part where he, his mom and him were at the supermarket. When he was a boy, where he forgot the tomato can, the tomato sauce. Why is it was important? Because the day after, she told her husband and Barry to go get the supermarket. Unfortunately, when they arrived, Barry's out of his room. His dad arrived. His mom was murdered. And unfortunately, his dad was accused of the crime. Even though Barry told him he was with them the whole time. Which, of course, bring back to 2023. Will Bruce Wayne find re to fix the video recording of the supermarket where his dad was? Fortunately, he doesn't show his face, which makes a problem for court to free him. Okay, back to here. Barry managed to fix this, but fortunately, while he's traveling back, something pushed him out like a, another. Uh, Try to return to the present, but he's knocked out. Of the f speed forward by another speedster. And ends up. In 2013. More specifically. Meaning it's past his 18 year old self. Where his mother's still alive but. And he realized. This is the day. Where he obtains his powers. Which of course. You know. Barry and his younger self. Go to the you know the institute. Where, of course, 2013 Barry was hesitant to do a guess. Struck by lightning, but fortunately, the lightning strikes. Recreating the accident. But, fortunately, doing so, end up both Barry's end up getting struck by the lightning. Giving 2013 Barry his power, but also causing Barry, the current Barry, the 2023, to lose his own powers in the process. Which, of course, Barry struggles to train 2013 Barry, which, of course, uh, let's say something stupid like, start going on a little speed run. Hey, you, until you lose, until you start catching fire because we're never velocity. 
Which, if more he spends, the more he hates up and calls the clothes on fire. He's butt naked in the middle of the road. And which, of course, <laughs> he just came back to his apartment holding a tambourine to cover his nutty bits. And, of course, when he was trying to explain about the, you know, the... the <clears throat> like the vibrating, which he allows him to face through solid objects. He did the same thing, but... <whistles> straight down, but left his monkey's monkey... Pulls back and scaring the shit out of his female neighbor. This time holding a pa a, a soup pan. <laughs> of course, I explain the whole thing. General Zod appears, asking where is Superman. Which of course, Barry twenty twenty three reminds of this is the day when General Zod arrives because he's trying to find. Superman, which is the Kryptonian. Unfortunately, here's the worst part. The current timeline where 2023 Barry is, is a timeline where there's no metahumans, as in there's no Wonder Woman, there's no Aquaman, there's no Cyborg, no Superman. Which, the only person they have to find is Batman, Bruce Wayne. Which, of course, they, they go to Wayne Manor, which, man. First of all, I want to talk about Wayne Manor here. I think, like, the current Wayne Manor of, you know, the Ben Affleck one. This is Wayne Manor from the Tim Burton film. And it's based on the manor in the in Bryn, the one they used in the first and second film of, of Tim Burton's two Batman films. And of course, the went inside, it looks like a whole mess, and went to the kitchen until they encountered Bruce, but... This is the old, an older version of Bruce, who has retired from crime fighting, which we did get a little fight scene between Bruce and the two Barrys. Mostly 2013 Barry managed to avoid getting hit by Bruce, while 2023 Barry getting the, sh the, getting the shit knocked out of him. Literally, from Bruce to be from pants, and almost getting hit by a knife. And soon we get the... Our first appearance of Mike Keenan as Bat as Bruce Wayne in full beard making well pasta spaghetti where he explains, you know Renard the okay, Renard the thing from Back to the Future going the straight line. Bruce does it with spaghetti and literally and the timeline that Barry created was more like a mess of soggy spaghetti noodles. While twenty thirteen Barry eats it while he enjoys it. Soon, because they try to convince Bruce to help, but of course he denies. Because he's retired from crime fighting. Soon, of course, the both bear 2023 Barry and takes 2013 Barry to the Batcave, which oh my god. When Barry turns on the switch and the whole Batcave lights up, you hear the original theme, the nineteen eighty nine theme. Of Batman right there. When you see the Batcave. You see the classic Batmobile from 1989. The whole thing. Damn. It takes you back to 1989. When you see the. See Tim Burton's Batman right there. That theme. Dun 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 dun. dun. Damn. Sorry but. I think Michael Keaton's Batman. Has to be the best one. Because come on. How, when's the last time. You see Michael Keaton. Okay I had to repeat it. But hey. Come on. Of course, the other Barry starts to go giddy, like, getting girly girl, like, getting giddy. He has to take the tarp off, and we get to see the 89 Batmobile right there. And while they're picking it up, guess what 2013 Barry found? Well, 2023 Barry's looking for some in the, you know, the Bat computer. A little black bag that laughs. Hear me out. A little black bag. When you open it, it starts laughing. Now tell me, the those who've seen the Tim Burton Batman, where was this bag found? For those who don't even know, this came from the 1989 film, The Climax, where Batman, Michael Keaton's Batman, was fighting Jack Nicholson's Joker on the rooftop of the church. Where he's when Joker's about had 
Batman and I forgot the name. This girl, woman hanging on the side of the of the of the roof while Joker is about to make his escape on his helicopter. Batman manages to use his grappling hook to tie to grab the Joker's leg and tie it to a gargoyle. When the gargoyle fell, it started to pull the Joker until he falls to his death. When Commissioner Gordon goes near the lifeless body of the Joker and hears a laughing. When he pulls out his coat, it's a laughing bag. The same bag that 2013 Barry is amused with. When I heard that, I was like, oh my god. There's so many references here. From the Batmobile to the little black laughing bag. The Joker's laughing bag. Damn it. Of course, Barry knows that Bruce is watching because the camera's on. He explains that you used to have an Alfred, which, of course, where's Alfred? He's dead. Remember, this is Michael Keaton Batman, so... Who do you think's Alfred in his timeline? Michael Gow. From that, from the night, from the movie. And he did Alfred in all four films of Batman. From the two Tim Burton films to the two, uh, those films. Which, of course, we did get, well, I like, okay, there's something about the fourth film I did like. It was when Bruce was, well, George Cody Bruce was looking when he sees Alfred dying from the same disease as Mr. Freeze's wife has. He sees a flashback when he was a boy that Alfred has been always been with him since his parents were murdered. He took care of him, so yeah. Seeing Alfred, like, sick and dying, it's kind of like, you know, losing a father figure. You can't believe it. Yeah, I appreciate Michael Gell's portrayal of Alfred. Come on. He played villains, but as Alfred Pennyworth, rest in peace, Michael Gell. Of course, we finally see Bruce find the side... Yes, I will do it. He he uses the scanner. His library opens, and lo and behold, his bat suits, including the iconic bat suit right there. While the others, well, the berries are just talking. Which of course, Barry finds a file I think Bruce left for him, which is the location of the other of what well, supposed to be of Superman's location. Well, it. <laughs> Sorry, just allergies. <laughs> Sorry. We have to report the NASA <laughs> because the look at the a Kryptonian pod that has been reportedly discovered in Siberia, held by Russian mercenaries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, of course, and Bull Barrett say, how we get there? And lo and behold, that's when, finally, Michael King Batman appears. He says his final phase line where 2013 Batman goes fanboy. He says, oh my god, look guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm Batman. Come on. And he's, he activates... The bat plane. The famous bat plane. <laughs> When's the last time you saw that thing? The first... Okay, come on. And of course, when they fly. Hey, they do in style. That damn... They recreated the famous... Hold it. <gasps> <clears throat> Sorry. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> damn allergies. But yeah. Oh, did they pause this for a minute? Because I'm going to sneeze more. Sorry about that. I was saying. When they manage to get in the bat plane. And Bruce takes off. Through the waterfall. You know, the hidden entrance. When they fly up to the clouds. It goes on the full moon. Recreating the famous one scene from, Bat from 1989 Batman. Which is when he's flying to Gotham. To catch, the, you know, the, ga the balloons. With the Joker gas. <laughs> flies up to the moon and the bat right in the middle of the moon right there from the poster right there recreating that damn beautiful when they arrive at Siberia that's when the Batman 
tells him to, yeah, parachutes, use them. And when Bob Barry asks, where's your parachute? He smiles and <whistles> down, Bat, his own style, come on. Of course, they arrive, and a fight ensues, they manage to break in, which of course, 2013 Barry's getting used to his powers, which of course, he pukes after that. Soon, as they're surrounded, Mountain King Batman comes down and fights off the Siberian mercenary, which, oh my god, that looks awesome. Soon they arrive at the pond, which turns out to be only a female. When he took her out, it turns out she's the Kryptonian. And it turns out she is the cousin to Kal-El, a.k.a. Clark Kent, a.k.a. Superman's cousin. Well, she explains that Cal's her cousin, and of course, at the rescue from the facility, they took her back to the Batcave. <sighs> which, of course, as a 2013 Barry takes her up the roof because, you know, son, she needs to regenerate her powers. Now, of course, Barry has Bruce to help him get powered by like, Ukraine, the accident, which, of course, was Bruce agrees because, of course, the first attempt fails and nearly kills until Kara. Flies Barry to the storm and gets struck, which of course successfully brings his power back. Zoom, they're prepared for battle. Of course, 2013 Barry needs a suit, so he uses one of Batman's old suits and turns his own, which of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course, as they repair. Batman, Bruce says is the famous line from the from the 1989 film. You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts. And to those who don't even know, I'm talking about the newer generation, the the Crystals. This was a line that Michael Keane's Bruce says in the first film while encountering the Joker and I forgot her name, shit. While well, Bruce was talking to her about, about he was about to reveal his identity, that's when the Joker burst in and explain, says, oh, two roosters in the hen house. And that's when Bruce starts to talk about the Joker's real identity until he, Bruce pulls out a stoker, which is the uh, uh, metal poker used for, you know, stoking the fireplace. And he's about to fight the Joker's A. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Until the Joker shoots him while saying this line, tell me, have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? I did. Bang. Yeah, that, that was the line from that. <sighs> Soon they arrive at the, the fight, which of course, <sighs> while Car is trying to get Zod to tell where is her cousin, <sighs> is revealed. What? Uh, damn allergies! It is revealed that <sighs> General Zod killed Superman when he was a baby. Because they encounter his pod, but fortunately, he, he was killed. <sniffs> Which caused Carl to f go berserk and fight him. Before they getting killed a bunch of time, killed by General Zod, and getting the the one the growth codex, which is the to remake Earth into Krypton again. Which of course the codex is within, is within Kara. <sniffs> which of course Zod overpowers them. Killing her instantly. Both berries have to draw back in time to fix it again, but of course, over and over. Current Barry, 2023 Barry, realizes they can't save them, but 2013 Barry doesn't care and keeps trying. Repeatedly travel back in time over and over, but always failing. As 2020, 2013 Barry travels, the multiverse Danny starts to collapse on his own. <laughs> Which, of course, the Dark Speedster that knocked 2023 Barry out. Which, remember, uh, uh, returns. And, and guess who it is? It's revealed to be, spoilers, the future version of 2023, no, 2013 Barry, who still believes he can save his world from Zod. And prevents the deaths of Bruce and Kara. <laughs> which he explains the casual loop paradox that led to his own creation. 
but grows anger when Barry reveals his own int intentions to reverse the changes and not let his mother die. But there's a scene which I did love about this paradox. <laughs> Ah, oh, sorry. In the paradox, what you see everywhere there, you have different timelines, different times, and when you, when you zoom in each one, the first one you zoom in, sorry, is the timeline of the shit. Okay, the first one we get to see... It's the timeline of the George Reeves Superman. <laughs> there was no no. George Reeves was the first portrayal, live action portrayal of Superman in the fifties. First portraying the the film Superman: The Mole People and the Adventures of Superman from nineteen fifty two to fifty eight. Hold it, I got allergies again. Because the George Reeves Superman, there's also here right there. It's the Eartha Kit. Catwoman as well. And remember, this is from different this is from different timelines throughout history, calling different versions of the Justice League from out film history. From the first one that appears is the, you know, the George Reed Superman from the 50s, and then you have also running there. Doing the same thing as the Flash is the Jay Garrick Flash from the Golden Age. This is the Golden Age Flash. You know the one with the uh, the military pan cap with the wings on? The old school Flash? And fun fact, this was actually a CGI. So it's not based on a notable actor. This is actually completely CGI. Which is awesome to see the Jay Garrick Flash along with the, the George Ray Superman right there in black and white. That looks beautiful. Then you have another one of you have a glimpse of the Adam West Batman chasing the C Joker, the Caesar Romero Joker. You hear him, both of them talking. He's like, hoo, 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 catch me, Cape Crusader. Hoo, 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 hoo. Damn, then you got more. Then you go to the Christopher, Christopher Reeves Superman from the 78 and 87 films, along with the Helen Slater Supergirl next to him. And then... Right there, we have a Superman fighting a giant spider. And guess who it is? None other than Nicolas Cage. This was the Nicolas Cage Superman from the unproduced Superman Lives. Which was supposed to be set in 1995 by Tim Byrne, but was never done and they canceled it. And so seeing this, seeing Nick Cage as Superman, and a fun fact, the writer of the script... Mentions there's a giant spider fight, and we get to see that signature fight between Superman and the spider. And soon we get more and more from different, and this is from different, remember, different heroes from the past, from different, all filmographies. So we have a lot of lines here. Remember, these are using film archives, like you have the Chris, you have the Christopher Reeve Superman along with the Helen Slater Supergirl, the Adam West Batman, along with George Reeves Superman. And they're like different from different years. You got the ones from the 50s, the 60s, and keep going, going. We even have Eartha Kitt as Catwoman, along with the Cesar Romero Joker and the Jack Nicholson Joker. From the recordings, if you, including some others. So yeah, we're going from different timelines, different eras, different universes, and we get to see all of them throughout all the old films from the, or like the, I think the first live action, Superman, what was it, George Reeves, to the tent from the um, Michael Keaton one, to Nicolas Cage's Superman, which, damn, that was pretty good, Clint George Reeves, Adam West, and remember, these people are dead. George Reeves passed away. We all know the story of his murder. We have Christopher Reeves who passed away from his from a sickness. Adam West who passed away of natural causes. So you all have a few people, and yet 
this is like a tribute to those who are no longer alive, including their characters' portrayals right there in those timelines. Hold up, I thought the sneeze again. Sorry. I was saying, to me, this, I know people say this might be the third I was weak, but from this half here, I love it. You have the nostalgia, the Easter eggs. You see, you can tell anybody who has seen all these movies and the actors, you gotta do your homework because it's quite interesting. Because, yes, because if you know your history of, you know, how, who was the first superhero, you know, DC superhero, well, it was actually the Fleischer Superman series by Fleischer until, you know, I think they did live action, which was this one, you know, the George Reeves Superman. With, okay, hell, he had like a series from 1952 to 1958, and a movie, which was the one that started it all Superman and the Mole People, which started at 51. A year later came the series, which was used through archive footage. And not just that, you also have, as well, other. You also have other Flash in their current of each of those current heroes timelines, like the, like Jay Garrick Flash with the Christopher George Reeves Superman, the Bond running there. And let's continue because this is I'm getting I'm getting too giddy here. Come on. Of course, we also have the current DCU version, like the, like the Henry Cavill Superman, the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah, if I recall that the, uh, shit, I forgot her name. She played Wonder <laughs> Woman in the TV show. I forgot her name, though. Damn. And she was a popular one, I forgot. She, I think she made a, a small appearance right there. You, if you blank, you miss. <laughs> Along with the Adam, in the same timeline as the Adam West Batman and the, and the George Reeves Superman. But continuing, after that, unfortunately, Darkberry tried to kill 2020 Dreamberry, but unfortunately, kills himself, meaning his past self, 2020 Dreamberry, actually, which, of course, erases him from the paradox. He knows what the current flag knows what to do, and made things right. And also, fixed the camera, so they could see his dad's face. While in the courts. Which of course. Everything looks like back to normal. He's talking to Bruce on the phone. As Bruce pulls up. <laughs> this is where it gets gu juicy. Because. When Barry's waiting for Bruce. Guess who appears. It's not Ben Affleck Bruce Wayne. It's George Clooney Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I just like. When I was in the theater, like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> George Clooney Batman? What the hell? Oh my god, Barry, what the fuck do you do now? What's your course, Barry? Like, wait, who are you? Wait, you start joking? I like it how this George Clooney Bruce Wayne still has, like, like a white beard. You know, it's actually pretty funny. Hold on, I'm about to sneeze again. Continuing. Sorry. <gasps> And fun fact, Bear, Bruce, okay, George Clooney is not even, he's like, he's uncredited in the credits, so you won't find him in the credits, so he just wants to be uncredited right there. And it was confirmed that he's uncredited. It's actually pretty funny, actually. <laughs> Which, if you don't know, George Clooney betrayed Batman and Batman and Robin back in 1996, so of course, it sucked. Which... Peepers and well, let's see. What were there were others, but hey. Ugh, sorry. I have to sneeze a lot. Oh yeah, it turns out the director, Annie Mulchetti, makes a cameo appearance at the end of the film as a reporter Barry steals a hot dog from. <laughs> oh yeah. Of course, we did get a cutscene where Barry is, wa is helping a drunk Aquaman, aka, you know, Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman, after 
Exter telling him about his experience through the multiverse, which of course he falls asleep in the water, which why not? He tells him to get another beer. Jesus. But yeah. And those are my thoughts on the Flash, but to me, what got me more getting more is with the uh, you know, the the Easter eggs inside the multi in Michael Keaton's, you know, Batman, you can see references from the films. Including the third act, which people think was boring, but hey, to me, I liked it because you have a lot of references from the timelines of every actor who played the the comic superheroes from the, which I'm not gonna repeat again because come on, you gotta be giddy when you see those old those famous superheroes, the old former actors who played those superheroes before the current ones did. That's why I bring them back to life, and plus we have the technology to do it. But well, you ever seen Rogue One? Hey, they brought Target back to life. But no, the actor who played him, Peter Cushing, died years ago in 1997, I think? 92 or 97. And they met, brought him back in CGI, and look, he looks like he's actually still alive. Not bad, huh? But still, I do like the, the Garrick version of The Flash. At first, the Jay Garrick's Flash, which people thought, oh, wait, is this an actor? But nope. It's CGI completely. There's no actor portraying that. But it looks pretty cool. But yeah, folks. I think that'll be it for today. And if you... What am I thoughts about the movie? Mm, I, I like it. But it's the timeline that got me so giddy. Right there. I find it decent. I give it a... Eh, decent. If you want to see it, hey, go ahead. Enjoy it. If you're a Flash fan, hey... You like timelines? This is one for you. But until then, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, and comment down below if you agree about the the things I mentioned about what are your thoughts about the Flash and did you like the scene when you saw all the this different universes with different versions of the heroes based on the other films from the past, making it more unique. But until then. Have a great day. Have a nice summer. Stay safe. Sit cool. Peace out.